Good evening, YouTube and YouTube viewers. Uh, my name is Jasper Black. I'm here in Huntington, West Virginia. It's about 1.45 a.m. A lot on my mind. A lot of things I want to get out there. Um, preferably uh, a lot of things that uh, need attention. And that is the things that are going on in our country. You know, if we sit back and we watch uh, the news, you notice right now on the Democratic side, you have President Obama. On the Republican side, you have Herman Cain. So here you have two African American men running for the highest office in the land. And right now, you see a battle going on. But who's paying attention to what's really going on? How so many African American males are displaced when it comes to unemployment. Um, you know, it's this common conversation going on in the community and throughout the land is that, okay, well, since you have an African-American president, then we're going to take it out on the African-American males and not employ them, lay them off. And this is a way to anger the African-American male so that uh, he would not want to vote for President Obama again because African-American males are feeling, well, what is President Obama doing for me? Because now it seems like uh, things are worse than they were before because on the local level and then on the state level, you know, when you look at the unemployment numbers, you know, how many of those uh, statistics really show the number of African American males who are being displaced when it comes to uh, jobs. Now, let's look at some other things going on with the federal government and jobs, uh, you know, let's say government jobs. You know, I've been living here in West Virginia and Huntington for 11 years. And, you know, when you have a corporation as large as the federal government, why is it not more diverse when it comes to people of ethnic backgrounds working? Are they not applying? You know, who's going to come in and look at the nepotism on the jobs, the favoritism? You know, why are these things not being reported? Then if they are being reported, people usually settle out so they don't say anything about it. It doesn't get anywhere. And the statistics are not really representative of the demographical area. Now, let's look at This 99%, I applaud them because they're sticking it out. They're out there in this cold weather and the rain, and they're really sticking it out. A lot of us would argue, well, why not go and get a job? You know, by the time you go get a $10 an hour job and subtract taxes and all these other things, you're back to making $4.25 an hour. When gas is three forty-five a gallon, and you're making four twenty-five an hour, you're basically paying. Uh, you're basically going to work to pay for gas just to get to work. 
And then for those who have families, when taxes are taken out, you're looking at your benefits. So everybody's increasing fees. Cities are increasing fees. States are increasing fees. Uh, electrical companies are increasing fees. But the average American, their salaries are not being increased. But they're being asked to pay much more. They've even raised a gallon of milk costs more now. You know, so what are we going to do, America? What are we going to do, people? What are we going to do? You know, are we going to continue to sit back and enjoy, you know, life as if nothing is going on? Or are you going to write your legislators and your uh, government and your representatives and say, hey, we need to change something here. We need to get something right. Because our country is hurting. People are hurting. And we need to do what's right. We need to speak up for those who don't have a voice. The media here in Huntington, I've written them before. They don't care. I mean, I have an ongoing uh, case right now that's filed in federal court. But when I ask to tell my side of the story, no one wants to listen. You know, I've had my name slandered. You know, I was wrongfully terminated from the job. Uh, I have a witness, and even people that know, that have common sense to know that, you know, I've never done anything on that job to hurt anyone. But I had to have surgery, and I was fired without any benefits, and thankfully, my spouse, her job offered me the opportunity to come on to her insurance with a pre-existing condition. So I was able to get help. But not before I was terminated from my job. You know, I was accused of going postal, going to come back and do something harmful to people on that job. Not so. Although I was hurt. almost lost a lot of faith in the human character to see that an actual human being could go behind my back and change paperwork so that I could be terminated. The media doesn't want to tell that side of the story. They don't want to tell people how I, I went from having a sizable salary to going to unemployment for two years and then looking for job after job after job only to be denied. But I thank God for strength. I thank God for support of family, for my wife and daughter, and my dog. Because my dog, we walk. And when I'm walking, I'm talking and just kind of relaxing my mind. And that's gotten me through. I'm thankful I'm employed again. I'm getting back on my feet. And I just pray that things will turn around. But I want to tell my story to the world. I want to tell my story to the country about how when you're terminated from a job, don't don't lose it. Don't go back and hurt the people that used to work there. I mean, that's a job. That's a job. But if it's worth it, go to your EEOC. Contact, you know, all the correct venues. And yes, it may be hard when it comes to financing and finding an attorney. But just keep struggling, keep trying. You can even contact me on my Facebook page or my MySpace page or on this YouTube page and I'll be sure to help you out but I want to get that story out there America help me get my story out there black in West Virginia my 11 year reign <laughs> the trials and tribulation of a black man in West Virginia it's been interesting I've had some good rides here and I want some people to know that I appreciate everything you've done for me here in West Virginia. But I know it can be better. Good night, and uh, hopefully I'll be talking with everybody again. Hey, Carson Daly, uh, Jay Leno, Pierce Morgan, somebody, look me up. I got a lot more to say, and I want to be heard. I'm a former SGA president from Marshall University Student Government, 2001, 
You have a master's degree, veteran of the Army National Guard, combat engineer, 88 Mike, truck driver, transportation specialist. I've done a lot. But I feel like it's time to get that story out there in this country and let people know that uh, we need to treat our people better in this country if we expect the rest of the world to respect us. Thank you. Have a good evening.